Today we're going to look at vaginal pH because unbalanced pH is a major cause of that recurrent UTI, recurrent bacterial uh, vaginosis, and even PID, which is pelvic inflammatory disease. By now we know that that yeast infection, which is probably not going away, might be caused by that unbalanced pH. And we're going to see the normal pH in a, in a minute. Now, we are going to see the effects of this unbalanced pH and also the signs and symptoms, what you can use to tell that you have this condition. We're also going to look at the causes, what usually cause this condition exactly, so that we can be able to see the treatment and prevention at a better length after knowing exactly what causes this. Now, this condition, unbalanced pH, can cause infertility, like we are going to see later on when it comes to the effects of this condition. And uh, let's first of all get to know what exactly is a normal pH. Now, body pH is around 7 there. It's neutral most of the time. But we have some conditions that usually limit or maybe raise or lower that pH. We are not going to concentrate on that. We are going to concentrate on vagina. The normal pH here is 3.8 to 4.2 around that area. If you notice, this is slightly acidic. The normal pH scale ranges from 1 all the way to 14. 7 being the middle point, this is a neutral position. This is the pH of water. Now, the lower you go, the acidic the place become. The higher you go, the more alkaline it becomes. So it's slightly acidic and this is very protective. It usually limits what bacteria can grow there and the yeast or the fungal elements which can grow there. So it's a very protective mechanism. So your body will have to maintain a pH of 3.8 to 4.2 in that organ all the time to make sure that that area stay protected. We have some normal variations when it comes to this due to the stage you are in life and also what's happening in your body. Like for example, when you are having your menses, you are supposed to have almost a neutral pH because now the blood that will pass has a pH of seven. Now this seven will flush out the acidity this will be temporary because your body will fix this later on by that discharge you usually get after you're done with your menstruation. That discharge flushes out everything and rectify this pH to 3.8 to 4.2, that range. And this discharge usually have a smell that's metallic due to the presence of blood. That blood will have ions and this is what usually make it. This is just a by the way anyway. Now, like we said, an acidic environment is good for your health in that particular organ, but it doesn't hold that all the time. So you're going to see the reason why it might affect your fertility. But first of all, let's see some of the signs that indicate that you have an unbalanced pH. Now, before you even get there, you will have to understand that we don't have like a, an exact way of knowing that you have that unbalanced pH. But the best thing for you to do in case you want to pinpoint before you get an infection is maybe buying a kit that helps in uh, taking the measurement of your pH we have a kit, you can just go to the local pharmacy and ask them for that. But there is no like a, like a way you can be able to tell that you have that, but you have signs that can indicate that you already have this. One of which is the change in the smell, that fish smell that we said this is because of a bacterial infection. And also the discharge, the color usually change to, from gray to yellow to green all the time and it's watery. And, uh, it's sometimes um, accompanied by some very nasty symptoms like pain in the lower abdomen, pain during uh, intercourse, or um, when you're passing out urine. So you might get those. This is because you have that infection. Now, if you have noticed, those are the signs of just a common vaginal infection. But the difference between those and the one that's usually caused by unbalanced pH is they keep recurring. You go treat that, but after some few months, they come back, or even after some few days, or even weeks, they come back. So they keep recurring. This is mostly because of um, this unbalanced pH, which is creating a good environment for the spread and the growth of the bacteria that you are trying to get rid of. Now, we mentioned about itching, burning, uh, sensation, pain when you're passing out your urine or when you're having sexual intercourse. If the effects are mostly on the outer part of your vagina, it means that you have a fungal infection, mostly candidiasis, which is very notorious when it comes to this because it takes the advantage of the pH to keep recurring every now and then. Let's see some of the causes of uh, this condition, some of which are just normal, others are things that we do to our bodies that cause this condition. Let's see the causes first before we get to know how we can be able to fix this and prevent the condition from occurring. Now, first one is the one that we mentioned. pH is usually affected by menstrual flow. Now, when that blood flows down, it washes off 
whatever is keeping your vagina to be acidic and uh, this is mostly rectified later on by the discharge you usually get after your menses. It will flush that back to revert back to the original acidic state. Now the second one is the use of antibiotics. If you overuse the antibiotics, especially beyond 10 days, you're going to kill some of the very good normal flora that keeps that place intact. If you disrupt that, you're going to have overgrowth of the bacteria and it's definitely going to disrupt or even the yeast infection is going to occur due to you killing the normal flora and when you have overgrowth of a foreign object there a foreign organism there you're going to affect the ph because now uh, the bacteria that was there keeping intact the structure of that uh, area you are, you've killed or you've removed that so unless you replace that which you're going to see later on of how you can be able to do that you're going to continue having this condition and some other infection that really come because of unbalanced ph now another cause is those feminine hygiene products that people usually buy they usually buy to wash their uh, organs it's very bad you actually don't need to do that the only thing that you need to wash is the outer part the vulva the outer parts but you're not supposed to touch your vagina with anything unless maybe there's something that you need to do there but if you have to wash that use water plain water or just add a pinch of salt don't use the products that people usually advertise there that they are going to do this do what remove the smell or whatnot they are going to disrupt the structure of your vagina and when that happens you're going to start struggling with um, this unbalanced ph it's very notorious we have other practices like dodging and also steaming you are definitely going to disrupt your vagina by doing this your vagina is supposed to be a self-cleaning organ it's it has the mechanism and that's why when anything happened there whether you have an infection or you're just having your normal menses at the end of it you're going to have a discharge that will try to flush out everything that you have there so just washing this i don't know you're just disrupting the structure don't, don't wash that just just let it be if you love to wash make sure you just use water don't use any products even the soap just use plain water or just add some salt that will be okay that will be totally okay just wash the outer parts another cause has to do with hygiene if you are not hygienic down there you're going to introduce other infections that will go and try to fight with the already existing bacteria or the fungi elements that are there normally and uh, you're going to disrupt this ph other activities like for example sharing of sex toys or maybe using hands which are not hygienic or they are not washed or maybe fingers or even body parts uh they are not good take for example you are having anal sex and you so happen to after doing that anal sex then you so happen to now cross to the other side, you go to the vagina. You are now introducing other bacteria, like the E. coli, from the back. It's a normal flora in the back side, but when you bring it into the other side, you're going to introduce that infection there because it normally doesn't stay there. So if you introduce that, it may overgrow, causing UTIs. And it may lead to, if it's a bacteria that can be able to proliferate inside the vagina, it may cause vaginosis and even PID. Another very normal activity, which is sexual intercourse, might lead to a fluctuation in uh, the pH because now, before the sexual activity, there is that discharge. Or when it comes to ladies, they become wet. And when it comes to men, there will be that tiny discharge that will come out fast. This is to flush out anything that's making that area to be acidic. For men, the urethra is a shared organ whereby you find that uh, the urine will pass there. The semen that contains the very delicate sperms will pass there. So to make sure that that place is habitable for the sperms, it usually gets to uh, secrete that fluid that will come and flush out the acidity so that now it will be neutral for the sperms to travel. The same case to the vagina, that wetness will be there because it will try to flush out all the acidity. So it works hand in hand to make sure that uh, the sperms will be comfortable traveling up. Acidity and alkalinity will affect the quality of the sperms. Traveling will be highly affected. And this might lead to infertility because if your organ cannot be able to control the acidity in that organ or alkalinity, the sperms will not be able to survive and they might not be able to travel all the way to go and fertilize the egg. So it's very important for you to have a balanced pH if you'll have to be fertile. Let's see how we can be able to fix this condition. Very easy. Some of the things are the things that we can do routinely to contribute to the health of this organ. The first one is just reducing the dampness. If you wear uh, underpants that are can air proof or waterproof, they're going to accumulate that dampness there and you're going to start suffering from this because this is a good condition 
uh, for the growth of yeast and some few bacteria, but mostly yeast. Yeast will come and disrupt the whole of that area when it comes to the pH. So make sure you're using clothes which are breathable and also the environment that you are in. You should try as much as possible to stay in a dry place. Take for example, you are swimming all the time, 24-7. So that's, um, that will increase the amount of dampness there. So it's good to just give yourself a break and also maintain a dry environment there all the time. The second one, which is very obvious, if you have a BV, which is bacterial vaginosis, which is underlying, or you've been having that for a long period of time, make sure you treat this because this might be the cause of that unbalanced pH. We have several ways. One of which is you can just wait down for it to resolve because most of the time it's usually resolved. But in cases where this is not going away, maybe the bacteria that's there is stubborn, you definitely need to see a doctor. We have some over-the-counter medicines. Okay, I'm not going to list them here because they are not approved, but we have some. I don't know how well they work, but I've seen them online. They promise to work. I don't know. I'm not 100% sure about that. So just stay away from them. We have antibiotics that your doctor will give you. And there will be a final thing that will be very effective at after, especially after taking the antibiotics. And remember, we said taking antibiotics for a long period of time will offset your normal flora. But then we need to replenish the normal flora back. This is something that you really need to know. If you've been using antibiotics, especially for those vaginal infections, you need to take back the lactobacilli back. We are going to see how, just in a few seconds. Now, second thing, like we said, wash your vulva. Stop washing your vagina. It should be just a good organ that knows how to take care of itself. It will have that discharge that will flush out everything. Just wash the outer part. Don't use a soap or those feminine wash or those dosing or steaming. Don't, don't do that. Don't send them. That's an organ that knows how to take care of itself. So just leave it. Just wash the outer parts and everything. And also keep the area clean. Like uh, sometimes you may shave and um, keep the underpants clean all the time. In case of a fungal infection, use antifungal. If you have yeast infection, mostly you're going to have that discharge, which is creamish and whitish, doesn't smell. That area will be inflamed and you're going to have pain when you're having sex, when you're passing out urine. Or when you touch that area, it will be just reddish and it will be just inflamed and it might have some crack looking things because of this infection. So treat this if you want to get rid of uh, that unbalanced pH because even if you use other methods, so long as you have this infection, it is stubborn, it will continue disrupting that um, the pH. But there's a thin line here because if you have unbalanced pH, you might introduce an infection, the one like, for example, the yeast infection. And this yeast infection will continue being there so long as you have that pH favoring them. So you'll have to disrupt that. But then you'll have, first of all, to kill whatever the infection is there, like take, for example, uh, the yeast infection. And then we replace that with the, with the normal flora so that you're going to fix this forever. We have people going without underpants, but then that's another thing that would expose you to other infections. I would prefer you wear cotton or breathable clothes, especially either a mix between cotton and polyester or cotton. They are very good. The final and very, very important, like we said, if you are using, if you are planning to kill uh, all the bacteria there for you to first of all balance the pH or remove whatever is causing this unbalanced pH, you'll have to replace that with the normal flora. I've been talking about um, probiotics. They are very important, but you will have to know exactly what you are treating here. Now, if the plan is to replace the normal flora uh, in the vaginal canal, what you need is lactobacilli. We have several strains here. There are so many. If you're going to buy that from a supermarket or from a shop, always make sure that that yogurt or that milk product contain um, lactobacilli, live cultures, meaning they have live bacteria that are living. They are already there and they are going to replenish that. They are very, very good. So if you're going to take those milk products like yogurt, try to use those that um, usually contain the probiotics. And we have those that will have so many organisms there. So try to use that. I mean, they might be a little bit more expensive, but that will be very important. Try to look um, into the constituents. They should write the bacteria that they have already there. Try to look at the product with the most organisms. If you have a good number there, just use that. They're very good. So they're going to replace that. In case you have conditions like uh, lactose intolerance, meaning that you are usually affected by products on the daily products, buy them. We have 
uh, probiotics in terms of tablets. You can just buy them and uh, just have a prescription for them. If you're done taking your antibiotics, then start taking uh, the um, probiotics. Because now, if you take them at a go, we have antibiotics, some of which are broad spectrum. So they're going to kill even um, the probiotics that we have, the live cultures that we have, that you want to go and replace the areas that is affected. So make sure you separate big line between them. So if you're taking uh, probiotics, make sure you're not taking any antibiotic. Fermented foods are very important. They usually regulate the pH there. They are very, very nutritious. They are very good. They are going to have very good yeast. Others can have that added manually. And then you take that. It will be helpful to you. I hope this video added value to you. If it did, give us a thumbs up. And also make sure you subscribe and don't leave the bell. Make sure you also hit that bell. Because I have a lot loading. We have so much to cover. See you in the next video.